you so much once again. Um, I'll be uh, just following uh, what has been discussed before. Uh, here's my paper, it's unmasking experience, um, unmasking expressive violence uh, versus criminalization and define the social genocide against the Banyamlingi who are portrayed as uh, invaders. Uh, I'm a, as I've, I've said, um, that's part of my PhD project. Um, I'm an active of the region. I've uh, been working on uh, South Kivu and North Kivu, trying to understand um, the motivation of former combatants to engage and disengage uh, into uh, armed groups. Uh, in between, I wrote um, a paper on uh, the situation of the Banyam Benge uh, as a working paper. Um, posted on a uh, my institute website, but also on a um, genocide watch website. Um, it's a genocide warning in relation to the vulnerability of Banyamlinge. Um, along my presentation on the debate around the, uh, the situation of Banyamlinge, I came up with an idea of trying to dissociate um, a indiscriminate violence against the Banyamlingi within such complexity uh, of the uh, wide violence in the region. As I mentioned, uh, Chris and uh, other speakers, sometimes we tend to uh, overwhelm the, by this the wide situation of insecurity, the violence uh, against the any uh, ethnic groups in the region. Um, and then it makes us uh, forgetting to really disentangle uh, some specificities uh, as what have been discussed or what has been discussed around the Banyam uh, The paper, I've shared the paper, I think, with the various and uh, the co panelists. Uh, it has uh, seven sections. Um, the section has a close up in the background of the current situation. Uh, we discussed, she discusses the complexity and the rationale of the paper. It goes back to the colonial legacy and the, from when the Banyamlingi uh, are considered as invaders um, to uh, the situation of where Banyamlingi were discriminated to the point of being attacked indiscriminately. Uh, but also in between there has been mass displacement. That scenarios uh, uh, to a large extent their uh, territories. Uh, but also I'll be discussing their vulnerability and uh, their engagement uh, within the, the, the armed rebellions and insurgencies in, in Congo are leading to what I'm trying to think as a double victimization, and then later uh, defining a social genocide. Um, I sort to discuss this as a, I'm not sure if that's the, the clear point, but uh, I'm trying to use um, a grounded theory approach. Uh, start by discussing the situation of the Banyam Ling and then uh, going to the point of trying to elaborate on what can be the, the analytical framework. Um, I've gathered some information through the existing literature, um, but I've also uh, I, I, I was in, uh, doing my field research on uh, South Kivu and North Kivu uh, between uh, November 2019 and May 2019. 1819. Um, but I also have gathered uh, a lot of data during the, the when I was writing my book Behind the Scene. Um, the research itself, the project itself, uh, is trying to understand what motivates uh, the, uh, the combatant, as I've said. Um, I'm sure we've already located the Banyam Lege. They are mainly located. Up to now, um, in uh, South Kivu, 
Uh, at the intersection of three territories, that's Moenga, Vira, and Vitizi. But at the time, uh, they've lived in different places, but uh, uh, because of violence, they, they are territory boundaries have tended to, to be narrow. Um, that's the current situation. You find that a total destruction. Uh, I think uh, Jean Paul has clear, um, clearly uh, discussed this. Uh, but this is a picture where you see the entire villages were destroyed. Uh, it's not only uh, villages, but also Banyam uh, Lenge in this region um, have been forced to flee into tiny areas where you locate them up uh, in Minembe, um, Mikenke, which is a, a, an internally displaced uh, <coughs> site, but also in small villages of, 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 of Bijombo. That's Bijombo. Um, Minembe is further down somewhere here. Uh, the large region where Banyamlengi have been living, um, almost 5,000 kilometers squared, then it's shrinking to a small area. But it's not only the point. Um, where they have fled, they've been attacked regularly. I have some records where Banyamlengi have been attacked. In Minembe, where the majority have fled more than 40 times, but also uh, you tend to read a sort of coordinated uh, attacks coming from different directions, but also um, they have been besieged within the small area. They cannot move within one to two kilometers outside of, 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 the, of the, the, the area where they are confined. Um, what's the most striking? You find armed groups who are attacking Banyamulengi outside of the region where they are, but also at the same time, in between, you find the National Army. During the fall, times attack happened, there were armed militia keep crossing the military deployment. They come and attack and then go back freely. Um, another aspect maybe to, to, to cut it short, uh, it's a, 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 very, a very intensified impoverishment uh, in which Banyam Lenga are, 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 being, uh, um, are really being victim of. Um, they are cattle headers in majority, uh, but you can no longer find any Banyam Lenga with his car. Either they were uh, looted by armed um, groups uh, or many have died because of the condition in which they were put uh, during the uh, different attacks. Uh, the recent attack started by uh, April 2017. Um, here, the one the picture just to illustrate what I was, uh, I was trying to, uh, to say. Uh, you see the A as a, as a point where you find um, armed position that's uh, the National Army, um, and then attacks comes comes the attack comes came from. Uh, different areas, and then they keep crossing the National Army to attack by Um Here the complexity. And that makes this debate leading me to try to disentangle. The, the recent actors uh, um, and the proxies, as, as I'm trying to put them, uh, there is a group of Banyamulengi, I think an um, example has referred to it, a, a group of Banyamulengi who have taken guns um, to protect themselves. Um, but in my understanding, and I think that's the point of, 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 of a quiz, um, this is the complexity making many observers. 
including next parts. Trying to simply say uh, these are groups, uh, intercommunal violence. Each community has uh, its own armed group and they keep fighting. And then we lose a sight of uh, what's behind each group fighting. That's the main point of uh, this paper. Um, Japan has referred to mapping report. It has a lot of information up to 2003. Um, within the mapping report, you see, you can see Hutu refugees, that the Rwandan Hutu refugees were somehow attacked systematically in Kodi I don't know. Uh, it's also another debate. Uh, you tend to see uh, the, the, the case of uh, Kasai, uh, people from Kasai who were attacked in, in, in Katanga region. Um, but also there is a such specificity around the Banyamlingi. Um, my key argument here is, uh, despite um, the, the, the comments from, uh, from Professor Nokesa, whom I know that I have uh, tried to discuss with him a few uh, times ago, but also I've, I've even uh, tried to review his, uh, his book, uh, um, which is a part of his PhD uh, thesis. Um, despite of some of these comments, uh, which is, uh, I do, I tend to see part of the narrative uh, of trying to deny Banyamlinge's victim, uh, victim hood. Um, within the mapping report, you see Banyamlinge being targeted. At the same time, in South Kivu, Kasai, Kinshasa, Katanga. At the same time, here the difference between Banyamlenge and the any massacre that happened within the region. I'm not really trying to downplay what's happening to other communities, but anyone who is familiar with the region, uh, you simply check possibly what happened in Mapobola. How long were killed? They belong to possibly one single community, which has Babembe. But within a few kilometers, they were, they were, they were killed by, by uh, during a, a, a rebel, a rebel, a rebel era, of, uh, which is an RCD, the rally, the Congolese rally for democracy in 98 August. Um, from Makobola uh, to Let's say Reba, Colomboco, these are a few kilometers. The incident that killed people, thousands in Makobola, it happened only in Makobola. But what's different from the Banyamlingi? At the same time, they were killed in Katanga, Kasai, um, but also Kinshasa, as, as I've mentioned. Um, we have uh, the, within the complexity, um, different armed um, groups. We have a, a UN peacekeeping mission, the region trying to portray violence around, let me call it around Bainamlingi as a tip for that uh, violence to simply see it's an uh, armed um, group from uh, one, one, one ethnic group to another fighting uh, one against another. Uh, then uh, this uh, leads me to uh, recall um, the, the, the argument from, uh, from Gantung. Uh, Gantung advises to check, um, to locate the contradiction. And the contradiction itself is part of what uh, Alex has uh, uh, described as a hermetic myth. Um, I don't want to go through the, the discussion of indiscriminate and expressive there is a criminalization and medievalization. It's very clear um, in um, Kalivas, but the key point is um, the, the indiscriminate and expressive. It's uh, targeting one specific group as compared to any sort of massacres, but not trying to target the entire group. That's the case I was uh, trying to raise uh, what happened in Makobola. 
I'm sorry, uh, I needed to stress there. That's not down say what happened to other communities, but I'm trying to check if there is a similarity of what happened to people in Kasika, if it's, this is similar to what happened to Banyam Lengi across the Congo. Um, that's a story of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a colonial legacy. Hanitikai processes. I'm trying to get on an interest on, a, on, a, on a something called the Kangeli cliche. It's a part of the local myth. It's a sort of a, an equivalent of, of Hanitic myth. Um, that's a myth saying other communities in house give specifically are uh, originating or have originated within the Congo, while Banyamling have originated outside of the Congo. I mean, the autochthony uh, locally is more defined within the Kangri cliche, um, which is well elaborated in Moler and Giovolelo. Um, let me move. Um, I think this has been discussed. It's a long story. If someone needs to understand what happened to Bangam Lenge, one, we need to go back to what happened in the 60s. In the 60s, uh, during the Simba Rebellion um, era, Bangam Lenge were again targeted. No, that's where it started possibly. But uh, uh, it has a link from my understanding of uh, the colonial legacy where Bangam Lenge was considered as uh, invaders, uh, they are chieftains, the traditional customary chieftains says were abolished. And then Banyamlingi started to become stateless. But in the meantime, they have been discriminated. That's a story you can read. Very clear in, uh, in, uh, in Le Pays du Vira, that's with, uh, with Memoir uh, 1959. Uh, it evolved through um, a very wide discrimination. I think as we well been elaborated by by Jean Paul. Up to the point, Banyamling were, were uh, during the, the, the Vangu Mambuini Commission, the Vangu Mambuini Commission have decided to expel entirely the whole community from Congo to their countries of origin. I don't know if it's Rwanda or Burundi or Egypt. One can define it um, as we see this. But, uh, the point was that they had to leave Congo. That's a, one of the entry points where you find Banyamlinge aligned with Rwanda or Burundi or Uganda to some extent and engaging in rebellion. But I was saying, I went to look at this during the, the, the 60s, uh, possibly standard of violence. Um, during the, the, the the mass killing, targeting by Namling, they were also forced to leave their land. What am I trying to say? Um, they are Congolese people. They have the, the right to live in Congo. Um, despite uh, what people can think of, uh, anyone who are trying to contest it by Namling, he he or she brings um, different stories, including their numbers, including their identity, including uh, that's a debate from Nopes. In my review of what Nopes have written in his thesis, um, I've been trying to be sure. You know, um, Nopes himself is a part of a community called Barega. In, in um, Nopes's thesis, he Possibly trying to say Barega has a one uh, common ancestor, while it's totally wrong. When he goes through Moler for other uh, uh, literature written during the colonial era, you find uh, Barega not um, as a community with a single ancestor. That means um, anyone who are trying to contest the Banyam language, we keep saying, no, Banyam language do not have uh, any single ancestor. That's uh, very similar to many other communities in the region. And then, um, other communities can live in, in Katanga. They live in Kasai. I've myself met people from uh, 
my neighborhood and the large one who currently live in Katanga, they do not, they do not have many problems as, as uh, what happened to the Yemeni. The Yemeni were forced in, in 98 to leave the Katanga, um, but also they have forced to leave a, a, a region called Ganja, but also Nirimba. Uh, and during the colonial era, they were again forced to leave uh, um, to leave in Tombo, um, I'm sure that's a, a very, a very huge debate. But uh, any minor mistake made at any point in time can still have repercussions or consequences uh, in the future. Um, there is a debate right now around what happened in the 50s when the Banyamlego were forced to leave their localities. Because the colonial farmers were trying to establish their farm in their uh, region, and then they had an agreement with the local communities saying, uh, Banyamalingo who are leaving their localities because the colonial farmers want to establish their farm, they can move from their localities to another region. And this is an agreement somewhere with the situation of uh, We move from their own localities toward other regions where Babendo were living. It's currently being used as a proof that Banyamulenge are refugees who came in Congo in 63. Um, my paper discusses the Banyamulenge involvement into. Uh, insurgents and rebellion. They have allied with Rwanda, Chankwe, but at the same time, Banyamlinga have taken a distance. At this point, when I'm saying Banyamlinga, I think I'm saying Banyamlinga um, who have engaged with these are, these are, these are combatants, not the community. I think we have also to make sure in our discussion there is a, a difference between a community composed by mainly civilians, but people who have been engaged into uh, rebellion or uh, combat life. Um, they have uh, in large a term print opposed the Rwandan Patriotic Front. They have even fought the Rwandan Patriotic Front to the extent uh, I tended to see when I was uh, when I was writing my book behind the scenes, uh, the pre vulnerability of Banyamlenge considered as invaders, you add another vulnerability because uh, there is a tendency to portray our insurgents as uh, being driven by Banyamlenge because uh, Banyamlenge grievances have served as a bridge to different actors to intervene. That's what happened in the 96 and then some extent 98. But also, you tend to see the same allies, let's say, trying to undermine their Banyamlinge, the Banyamlinge existence in this Congo. That's what I'm uh, trying to cause a double victimization. Yeah. Um, that's my book. Um, so, how I define uh, the Sojourn site? Let me back to this possibly later. Um, apart from the idea of the convention against the genocide, um, it has a clear definition. But uh, um, at some point, uh, it's more Lego oriented. But uh, there is uh, an amazing literature trying to elaborate genocide as a, a very complex and applied uh, process, not a single event. Um, whenever someone tries to analyze what happened to Banyamlingi, maybe Nigatumba, and you disconnect this to what happened in 60s, 90s, 20s, it becomes a, a snapshot. Um, as uh, indicates uh, Rosenberg and, and, uh, and Selena. Um, there is an amazing literature on uh, genocide by attrition. 
which is somehow silent and efficient, it tends to use uh, indirect means by killing people. And then the perpetrator, perpetrators keep avoiding their uh, direct responsibility. We have uh, evidences of uh, Banyamalingo who have been impoverished uh, recently. Some are dying because of the condition which they were uh, put through uh, recent violence. We have hundreds of uh, children who are suffering from malnutrition. Uh, while they, they, they use it to live um, through their economic livelihood uh, based on crypto. Uh, the similar situation has happened to, to Rohingya case uh, in Myanmar. Um, to cut short the story, since 6 4, Banyam Lengu were killed in different localities. Uh, while the men were fleeing towards uh, the Simbaris boats, uh, believing they would, they would be protected by three boats. Um, the incident in which they were killed happened in a similar context. And the men were killed um, by starting with men. The killing starts mainly by targeting men and young boys. It's a similar of what happened in 96, 98. The only difference is what happened in the Gatuma, of course, they were targeting specifically a group um, within uh, the one kilometer neighborhood. There was another, another, another refugee camp. Uh, which never got any any help. Uh, but the Malingo were killed following a public announcement and call where public officials. Do I still have five minutes, uh, please? If you could wrap up uh, pretty quick, maybe just in a minute or two, is that okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, there has been um, public calls. We have cases which have been discussed, I think, by, by, by the report. Uh, it happened in 96, 98, but also there is some similarity of what happened in 2004 before Benjamin Lenge fleeing Bukava and Uvira towards uh, Burundi. Um, this is that group contested, of course, but negatively identifiable. We have a case of people who have been killed from uh, West Africa because they were considered as uh, Tutsi and Banyamlingi. Anyone who has followed, um, let's say, uh, Laurent Kabila's speech in 1998, or um, his cabinet uh, chief, Yerudian uh, Dovasi, they were describing people who would be killed. This is how they look like. Uh, the, 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 uh, the violence against the Banyam Ling has destroyed their properties in the of Keto. Um, in many cases, um, they were under control of a perpetrator. I mean, uh, when you take a case of uh, military trainees who were in Kamina, Katanga, they were under control. What that's happened again in Bura. Uh, it happened um, anyway in a different in different context. Um, I think many of these uh, during my analysis, uh, I think I, I still needed to clearly understand uh, this link. But the, there is a sort of link from sixties up to recently where you find. Um, perpetrators linked to Simba rebellion. That's uh, in 96, you see uh, the hand of, 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 of Anguruni Bembe. Uh, you can read this in um, uh, on the paper of Brass Root, um, but also this is a story uh, I know as an artist. 
and Zuluni Bembe is a part of the Babembe community who mainly were a part of the, the Simba rebellion that attacked the Panyamurink in the 60s. He's the one who instigated the violence in the 90s. Uh, you see again Laurent Kabila, who was a part of the, the Simba rebellion uh, in the 60s. He's the one who killed again the Banyamurink in 98. But also, uh, in his entourage, you find many generals who were part of the Simba rebellion. And then, um, that's the argument. Uh, the key argument from my paper is uh, uh, try to connect many of these incidents and see what were the intention to kill them. Many from the testimonies of 90s, 1996, 1998, and the 2000, you see they were killed. Um, I mean, they were killed in a situation you see an intention to kill. Thank you so much.